Welcome to SCNC 1111 Group Project Tutorials. This series of tutorials are meant to help you with your group project in SCNC 1111. In this tutorial, we will be talking about linear regression with Excel. Before beginning with the tutorials, I want to start with a story. First of all, let us assume that all mammals are spherical, with a radius r. From high school mathematics, we know that the volume of a sphere is 1 over 3 pi r cube. Therefore, volume is proportional to r cube. Graphically, it can be visualized. When volume is plotted against r cube, we have a straight line relationship passing through the origin. We can also say that r is proportional to the volume to the power 1 over 3. Now we also know that the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r square from our high school mathematics. So surface area is proportional to r square. And since r is proportional to the volume to the power 1 over 3, surface area is proportional to the square of the volume to the power 1 over 3. Using the laws of indices we have learned from high school, we know that the surface area is proportional to the volume to the power 2 over 3. And we assume that the surface area is directly proportional to the heat lost, because the larger surface area will allow more heat to be dissipated. We also assume the heat lost is directly proportional to the metabolic rate because a member will need to compensate the heat loss by increasing its metabolic rate. We can also assume that the volume of the animal is directly proportional to the mass of the animal, assuming that the animals have equal density. Finally, we can come up with this relationship, which is the metabolic rate is directly proportional to the mass to the power 2 over 3, which could be visualized as this. When the metabolic rate is plotted against mass to the power 2 over 3, there is a straight line relationship passing through the origin. The relationship we have seen is called allometry. In general, the metabolic rate of an animal is directly proportional to the constant power of the mass of the animal, which can also be written like this, where metabolic rate equals to A times the mass of the animal to the power B, where A and B are constants. There are other examples of allometry, for example, the brain size of an animal to its body mass, and also its lifespan to its body mass. There are also some possible explanations for allometry using the concept of fractals. If you're interested, you should go to this link and have a read. Now, in this tutorial, we'll be focusing on Max Kleber's data, which he obtained 80 years ago. So 80 years ago, Max Kleber obtained the data for the body weight and also the metabolic rate of various different mammalian species. He plotted the metabolic rate against the body weight of the different animals and found this empirical relationship. This process is known as regression. In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to recreate the plot that Max Kleber did. I mentioned that the metabolic rate equals to A times mass to the power B, where A and B are constants. Therefore, you might be expecting that if we plot the metabolic rate against the mass to the power B, you have a straight line passing through the origin with slope A. But however, we do not know what B is. Now, a way to overcome this is to take log on both sides of the equation. So recall the log rules you have learned from your high school maths. Taking the log on the right hand side will give you log A plus B times log of the mass. And also recall that the equation of a strict line is y equals the intercept plus slope times x. And therefore we can plot log of the metabolic rate against the log of the mass. And then we will find the strict line with a slope B and intercept log A. This process is known as linearization. In this tutorial, we'll be performing the regression on the data using Microsoft Excel. Now assume that you are given the data in a text file, and in order to input it in Excel, you need to copy it and paste it on Excel. Now occasionally you'll find something like this. Excel is not able to split the information into different columns. It may or may not happen in your computer, but when it happens, then there is an easy way to overcome this. You can go to the data tab, 
click on text to columns, select the limited, and choose the appropriate delimitators. In this example, when tab is selected, you can see that the text will be separated into different columns when there is a tab between the words. A lot of publicly accessible science databases are written in the text format. Often, the different columns are separated by a tab. Then, you can press next. So now the texts have been correctly assigned to different columns. Now recall that we want to perform linearization. We want to take log on both the body weight and the metabolic rate. We can easily do this in Excel. To take log on the data in the grid B2, all you have to do is press equal sign, log, bracket, then you can click the B2 grid. It's optional whether you specify the base, but if you don't specify it, it will be of the base 10. Now similarly, for a second grid, you can also take log. You do not have to manually calculate the log of every grid. All you have to do is to drag the bottom right-hand corner. Excel will automatically complete the other grids for you. It is good practice to check whether Excel has done the correct calculation for you. Similarly, you can calculate the log of the metabolic rate using the log command. Again, take some data and check whether Excel has already selected the correct algorithm. Now we want to plot the log of the body weight against the log of the metabolic rate of the animals. To do this is very easy. All we have to do is to select the data that we want to plot, go to the Insert tab, select a scatter plot. So boom, you have your data with your log of the metabolic rate against the log of the body weight. By default, Excel will treat the left-hand side column as X and the right-hand side column as Y. But this is not enough. We want to find a straight line model in order to describe the data. To do this is very easy. All we have to do is right click on the data, add trend line, and now you have a linear trend line. We want to know what is the equation of this line. You can select display equation on chart and display R square on the chart. You can drag around the labels. Now you may think that this is enough. But for proper presentation, you should also include the axes, both the x-axis and the y-axis, and also include a meaningful title. So we add the chart element, go to axis titles, primary horizontal, and primary vertical. So the y-axis is the log of the metabolic rate, and the x-axis is log of the body weight. You may also want to type in the units, although this is optional for a log plot, because after taking a log, the units are virtually meaningless. Also provide a meaningful title to your graph. So now you have a graph that you can copy and paste into your PowerPoint slides. Now, Max Kleber actually didn't include the data for the elephant because the measurements of the metabolic rates are measured under different conditions. We may choose not to include this point by changing the range of the data you include in your plot. But if you want to show the data for the elephant without including into the regression model, you have to add a new series of data. All you have to do is right-click on the graph, select data, then add a new series of data and choose the appropriate X and Y values. Now you can see the elephant data has been included into your plot, but it's not included into the linear model that you are trying to use. Other than linear models, Excel can also help you plot a number of different models. For example, if you just want to directly plot the body weight against the metabolic rate, you can also do this to insert a scatter plot. You can also add a trend line to this data.
click on the trend line and instead of a linear trend line you may want to choose a power model and then display the equation and also R squared on the chart you can also increase the font size of your labels to make it more visible of course you may also want to go to chart design and add the axis titles and also give it a meaningful chart title. To change the axis to logarithmic axis, all we have to do is to left click on the axis, then right click on it, format axis, scroll down, select a logarithmic axis, axis options, logarithmic axis so boom again you have a straight line but this time you fit it with a power model you make this line straight only because the axis are in log scale now go back to the original plot now if you want to calculate the p-value of this linear regression you will need the data analysis 2 pack it's available on Mac in the latest version of Excel you need to go to Tools, Excel Add-ins, and then select this Data Analysis 2 pack. Then, all you have to do is to go to Data, go to Data Analysis, select Regression, choose the suitable Y values and the corresponding X values. You can also choose these options. And on a separate tab, Excel will have calculated the p-value for the slope, which is this one. Now don't worry about the p-value of the intercept, because very often we are not very interested in this one. This is the p-value of the slope. You can also see the R-square and the standard error here. And these are the plots. Scroll down and you'll find the residuals. Now thank you for watching this tutorial.